Hey, how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. Alright, okay, so I'm going to do something a bit unusual for me at this point and actually talk about my writing this time for once. Um, so as you might remember, um, I have been trying to edit my way through the full book, first full book spin-off series from the Never Rating Collection. So um, just to sort of briefly overview for anybody who I've, is not aware, um, Never Rating Collection is my collection of door stoppers. <laughs> um, all four books are available on Kindle. The idea is that they can be read in any order, although two books happen later in the timeline and two books happen earlier in the timeline. The two books that happen earlier in the timeline are companion pieces, so they happen over the same period of time, roughly. Um, and the two books later in the timeline are also companion pieces, so they also overlap um, where they are in the timeline. Um, they don't all necessarily start and finish at the same points as each other for the companion books, um, but they, they cover some of the same events. That's how it works. Um, each book follows a different one of the four boys of Never Eaten, Sly, Zell, um, Jay and Orion. And each kind of has their own story to tell and with the companion books you kind of get two points of view on some of the similar situations that, or some of the situations that happen within the books. Um, but you also get like a whole bunch of extra stuff that is just specific to that character and that character's experiences and what that character is going through. Um, Jay's story, which is Hyena Boy, is the shortest of the four book. It was the first one that was written. Um, I'd actually written it originally as a teenager. So I wrote it when I was, I think I started writing it when I was 17 um, and finished writing it sort of probably when I was 18. Um, I revisited it a few times since then and like updated it and tidied it up and stuff like that. Um, but it was when I was trying to get it ready for publishing um, through initially through Lulu um, that I realised there were other stories or there was another story going on in the background um, and from that point on the rest of the narration collection kind of came into existence with the next book being The Colours I See, then No Doors Allowed, and then We Giants in terms of the order in which I wrote the books. Um, but again, the idea is that you can start at any point in it and read all of them and it just like they flesh each other out. Um, but in terms of all of the book being written, it was High in a Boy, The Colours I See, No Doors Allowed, and We Giants. Um, recommended order from my point of view is I would probably say start with We no, start with The Colours I See, then High in a Boy, then No Doors Allowed, then We Giants. Um, and I my reasoning for doing it that way. Um, just in terms of like what events overlap and various little details that I think probably work better doing it in, in that sort of direction. However, I don't think there is a right or wrong way of approaching the books in each set of companion books or each set of companion ones. I would definitely say start with the earlier part of the series and then go to the later part of the series. But even that, I, like, I don't know how well they will work work in any other kind of order because obviously I wrote them in that particular order and I've edited through them in that particular order so my brain knows them in that order um well apart from like you know Tyler Boy and, and Colors I See reversing for what I would recommend reading wise um and yeah yeah it, it's <laughs> it's an interesting series I recommend that you check it out however I don't think you need to have read the Never Rating Collection in order to enjoy and appreciate the first spin-off series, um, which I believe I've mentioned the title of before, um, but the title of the series itself is going to be What Makes Me. Um, with each 
part sentence be completed with the name of the main character. So it's what makes me Toby, what makes me Rowan, what makes me LJ, and what makes me Silas. Um, so obviously it's a spin-off, so some of the characters from the original series do appear. They are, and this is... This is about 14 years on from the uh, final point, um, or the latest point <laughs> in the Ned Roten collection itself, which is the end of uh, No Doors Allowed, because that one finishes a couple of months after, not even a couple of months, a few weeks later than uh, we, we Giants finish in terms of date-wise in the timeline. But it's like, it's like, it's fairly close. So it's about... 14-ish years after the end of um, We Giants and No Doors Allowed, you pick up with the start of What Makes Me Toby. Um, so these books do fall in a order, so there is a chronological timeline for them, but there is also a time skip, more of a time skip, <laughs> more of a time skip um, between the end of Rowan and LJ, and uh, then there is between Toby and Rowan, but there is a year between Toby and Rowan, um, roughly a year between between the end of Toby and the start of Rowan, um, there is roughly kind of a year, probably slightly less than a year because Toby ends in the summer and it picks up I think in the spring of the following year, so it's like less of a, less of a gap there, um, then it's about three years between the end of Rowid and the start of LJ, and Silas's starts before LJ's story finishes. Um, so there's a little bit of a crossover, um, but like the most of LJ's story has probably finished before the start of Silas's, um, but there there is like less of a gap there. That's basically the way of, of sort of looking at it, and then obviously Slices finishes at the end of the story, that end of the timeline. Um, in terms of how the stories feed into each other, um, I wouldn't necessarily say that their plots uh, feed into each other. Definitely, uh, kind of. <laughs> it, it's one of those things where certain events that have happened in one story does feed into how the rest of the series sort of progresses afterwards. Um, for example, the relationship that Rowan is in at the start of his story would not have happened if Toby's story had not played out the way that it had and hadn't happened at all, to be fair. Um, likewise, certain events uh, that shape the start of LJ's story wouldn't have happened if Rowan's story hadn't happened the way that it had. Um, Silas's links more back to Rowan's than it does to LJ's, but LJ's story links in to um, Silas's story once you reach a certain point. Um, so it, it all sort of yeah, flows together, and, and the events which happen in one affect things that happen in the following stories or reflect details that happen in the following stories. So it is a cohesive timeline, but it's not a singular narrative. Like each story tells its own individual story, but it makes more sense of certain details if you read it in order. But if you don't read it in order, then you're not going to be completely lost because you don't need to know what's happened in the previous books in order to understand what's happening in, in the book that you're reading. Um, but like I said, it is, it is a chronological timeline and it is, unlike with the narrating collection, it is designed to have an order to it because there is a definite timeline to it. Whereas the other one, there's a lot of overlap between stuff and like repeating scenes. You don't get that in, in what makes me. Um, sorry, where do we go from here? Um, so obviously Toby is going to be the first book that will be released for this series. I don't know yet how I'm going to tackle the releases. I definitely want a gap of a length of time between each one that is more than a day. <laughs> um, obviously I'm editing them all 
to at the same time well I say I'm editing them all at the same time I'm basically going from the start of Toby into Rowan into LJ into Silas and every single time I like start the loop of editing I go back to the, the beginning of Toby and go through and it gives me like that gap between each one so there's a gap between between each one but it, it also allows me to sort of like link things together and make sure that the continuity is, is correct and, and, and various things like that. Um, it gives me a chance to sort of like think about various details and go back and edit things and, and stuff like that. So basically when they, they basically the idea is when one of them is ready, theoretically they should all be ready because they all have the same amount of editing time on them. Um, so once I'm sort of like, yeah, okay, I'm happy, I'm going to stop editing now. Um, it should be at a time when all four of them are ready to release. But I haven't made any firm decisions about how I'm going to stagger that release yet. Um, I don't want to do what I did with um, the Dollmaker Thumbs books, where I did release them on the same day. Um, pretty sure I released them on the same day. I don't release them the same day, it's like very little time between them. Um, I definitely want to stagger it a little bit more with the idea of release one, and then when the next one releases, have the previous one have its free five days for the first time, and then so on and so on and so on, um, until they've all like had their releases and then at the right amount of time between for the last one to then have it have its three days um but i don't know at this point in time where i want it to be like a week between each release um whether i want it to be a couple of weeks between each release whether i want it to be like a month between each release i know we're getting into the second half of the year at this point um so like theoretically there's still time to do one at the beginning of one month and the beginning of the next month and the beginning of the next month and the beginning of the next month um it, yeah, it's it's one of those things where I've not I'm not one hundred percent sure how I want to to sort of cycle the releases yet. Um, I have started working on the covers. Um, I started sort of I had like a base for the covers a little while ago. Uh, but this is like I've now started working on like the cover images. Um, I've got Rowan looking really good, which is I know it seems weird that they've got the second one down first, but the cover image I wanted for Rowan's um, was the easiest for me to do on my own. Um, Toby's is sort of like the image is sort of like halfway there. Um, I, I, I need sort of certain control over certain things I don't quite have control over at the moment in order to um, improve that one and give me the space that I need to do certain things that I, I would like to do for that one. Either that or I just need to like investigate how to use Photoshop a little bit better so I can do the things that I want to be doing with um, with Toby's one. Um, and then for LJ and Silas's one, um, I'm still trying to determine exactly what the concept image is for those. Um, so I know with Toby it's going to be a skateboard with his name on the skateboard and hopefully little images on the skateboard or I could do little images around the skateboard to be fair I like I, I I could <laughs> there's nothing to say that I couldn't do it that way but I, I quite like the the idea of like having a central image with like little images on the on the central image um so yeah um so that that's the the concept with Toby's and at the moment I do have like the skateboard it's just the I need to resize the skateboard so I can get the other images on it and I can't work out how to resize the skateboard <laughs> in Photoshop. Um, so I need to, may need to sort of like take a step back and resize something else in order to, to get it to work um, the way that I want it to work. Um, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. Um, and then for Rowan's it's a CD. Uh, with with his name on it and then like lots of images around the CD and I think that's why it was so easy to do because it made so much sense for him as a character anyway and then it was just like getting those those little bits and pieces on it and yeah it looks it looks really good 
if I do say so myself. Um, and I'm thinking for LJ's, it will be a box with a little lock on it, like a little jewelry box type thing that I'm going to have to create in <laughs> paint <laughs> because that's where I've created backgrounds, back, like the base images for the other two so far. And I'm kind of like, oh, that doesn't seem like it's going to be particularly easy to do. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, the, the the box image makes a lot of sense for her, um, considering there is this like this huge plot point around um, a particular box of hers. But at the same time, it's kind of like, uh, is that really a good enough focal image? And then I'm like, well, no, I'm not sure what other image that I could do for her that I could like. Theoretically, have little stickers stuck onto it. I mean, I know her box in reality doesn't have little stickers stuck onto it, but Roman doesn't have a CD with little stuff stuck onto it, so I'm not too worried about that. It's more about like making sure it's the right representative kind of image um, than necessarily having it as a exact for the thing that is in there. And that's why I'm like, uh, it could work, but I'm not sure if that is the right thing because. Uh, is there anything better that it could be? Um, yeah, that's, I, I, I mean, it's at least something I'm happier with than I am with anything that I've come up with Silas. <laughs> like, Silas is by far the one that is throwing me the, off the most at this point. Um, I don't even have a good solid base concept for something that would work for Silas um along the sort of the same lines there's no yeah no maybe maybe i thought of something that could work but again it's one of those things that's going to be a bit bother the bothersome to sort of do but i could i could make it work i now come up with an idea for silas i think i can make work okay there we go um I'm not going to mention what Silas's one is yet, um, and there are reasons why I'm not going to mention what Silas's one is yet, um, just basically because I know the cute friend is going to be watching this, and there are certain things that I do not want to spoil for. <laughs> In case you're wondering why I'm being so mean, um, Silas is one of the children of the main characters from the Neverayton collection and there are certain details about Silas that the cute friend is not aware of yet and I'm not spoiling because it is greatly amusing to me. <laughs> it, is, it is far too amusing far 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 too amusing for me so i'm like yeah i'm not letting them know yet what this certain detail is so therefore i am not spoiling all the ideas that i've come up with that i think would probably work now that i've actually stopped and, and thought about it i yeah I, I think this is a this is a good idea this is a very good idea so. <laughs> all right um uh, whether or not i can make these other two ideas work in using paint as a basis for the drawing of it like i'm using paint to sort of do like the background part of the image and then using photoshop to add everything else onto it because i i know how to make shapes in paint and i struggle to make shapes in <laughs> photoshop <laughs> i'm not very good with photoshop i really am not very good with photoshop um but yeah, it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have now come up with an idea for all four covers. Um, so yeah, the, it's more than possible that I'm going to have all four covers sorted and ready at about the same time now as well, now that I know what the other covers are going to be and it's just a case of getting everything together and getting it to work and rah, 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 rah. So yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm reasonably happy that I know what I'm doing. Um, 
Yeah. I'm always going to have that in the wrong way. But yeah, anyway. Um, it's, it's just trying to decide what the release order is going to be, uh, what the most effective release order is going to be for them. Um, because I can set it up as a like, pre-release kind of stuff. So, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but yeah, that my, my plan is to hopefully have all four out before the end of the year. Um, because I am sort of like editing them all at the same time together, they should theoretically be all ready at the same time, all ready to go um, at about the same time. So it is just a case of making plans on how I'm going to do the next stage of it, as it were. Um, so yeah, rightly update done, yay! Um, all right, okay, I'm going to leave this here. Um, I hope you found this one sort of interesting. I hope you're looking forward to seeing whatever it is I'm going to be talking about next time, and I will see you next time. See ya. If you've enjoyed this video, consider checking out some of my others, and if you like what you see, consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching. See ya.